Hey people on YouTube, I'm Zach Hall here and want to do a quick review for you on the Ryrie King James Study Bible. And so it comes in this nice box and this is one I just picked up. This is the Genuine Leather Edition and uh, it's a beautiful Bible. Really great study Bible. Um, if you're looking at something that is uh, kind of the straight down the line, conservative, um, evangelical, uh, yet scholarly, and really well done. Um, this is a really, really great Bible. I would highly recommend this. Um, I'm still digging through it, but it's got a lot of cool features. So we'll do a, just a general brief overview of this Bible. Um, I'll try to keep it brief. And then I'll do a more in-depth how to use it and all the features uh, and, uh, and how those are useful. But we'll try to touch on those as we go through this Bible. But it comes in this nice two-part box. Uh, the King James. It comes in the King James in ASB. And uh, the King James box is blue. The NASB is green. You can see here it retails for $84.99. However, on Moody Press's website, it uh, sells for $64.99, the genuine leather. I also got this for about $64 because uh, Mardell does a 30% discount. And then you could um, also get on Christian Book for about the same price as well. So you can kind of see how the layout will be there in the corner. And then you've got... Um, here are all the features of the Bible. If you want to pause and take a look at that. And then we'll show you the Bible itself. Beautiful Bible. Okay, this is the genuine leather. Got a beautiful grain on it. It's very soft, very soft touch to the feel. It's very tactile. Um, very kind of got a good grip to it. Um, it's got a beautiful spine. Okay, pretty basic, but very well done. Got Moody's logo at the bottom, KJV, Red Letter, Rari Study Bible. You do have hubs around those. So you've got uh, five hubs, it looks like. Um, you do have a tool line around the perimeter. I'm not sure this is a genuine leather. I don't know what type of leather this is. I mean, it almost feels like a calfskin or maybe a lower grade cowhide. Um, it's definitely not like a goat skin or something like that, but this is but nonetheless very soft, very supple. Uh, feels very nice in the hand. And then it comes with one ribbon marker. It's got beautiful gold gilding. Now, one of the reasons why you can find this thing for a really good deal at $64 is because this edition, uh, the Rari Study Bible, these are not smice sewn to my knowledge. These are only glue bound. Now, don't let that deter you because um, these glue bindings are getting way better. It is also a, re a reinforced spine as well. So you can see how they did that. This whole Bible is reinforced. So I wouldn't let that deter you from this. I still think you can get a lot of use out of this Bible. Actually, I've seen some reviews where um, some people have used these for over 15 years. So you can see just because it's a glued binding doesn't mean it's going to fall apart on you. As a matter of fact, I hate if you've seen my review of the MEV thin line, uh, I showed you that that was a four year review of which I've used a lot and it's still really intact. It's not falling apart at all. So this Bible's a, a really good one and I don't think that should should deter you. I think you should be you know pretty confident in getting this and especially with this cover, I have a feeling this will hold up for a long time. Now this cover will probably indent as you can kind of see right there like a Thompson chain like the Kirkbride ones. Um, which I think is pretty cool, actually. I don't mind that. But uh, getting into this real quick. So you're going to have some cardstock pages there in the front. You'll have a presentation page. Then you've got the Ryrie Study Bible uh, title page. And then you've got... Uh, this is printed in Italy, actually. So I don't know if that's done by LEGO, like the Cambridge ones. But you can see they're printed in Italy. And then you've got the contents page. A lot of good stuff in here. A lot of good stuff. And that continues there for two pages. Here's some acknowledgments from Ryrie of the, the, the of things he's used in this Bible. In here. Um, so different um, maps, charts, and acknowledgments. Then here is a to the reader page by Ryrie. And this is a great um, 
great help. So I'll just read you the last sentence. In the fuller review, I'll probably read all of this, but here in the last sentence is, Useful as helps can be, the most important thing is to read the Bible itself. This is God's word to you. I pray that these notes will serve to make it clearer and more personal, personally meaningful. So in this actually whole paragraph is really good. So you can just kind of see his heart behind this. Um, Ryrie was probably one of the greatest premillennial uh, preachers, um, very evangelical, uh, gospel-centered, um, and very scholarly. So uh, you can kind of see a little bit my copy. It's not splitting, but you can kind of see a divide up there. But other than that, I mean, again, I don't think that's going to be a problem. You have a how to use this study Bible. And again, we'll, once we go over how to use this, I'll definitely go more in depth there. But that's also written by Charles Ryrie. Then you have abbreviations and markings. I'm sorry, guys, I'm a little <clears throat> stuffy today, so apologize if I sound a little weird. You have tables of weights, measures, and coins, which interesting is at the beginning of this Bible. Also, your Bible reading plan is at the beginning as well. This is to read the Bible through in a whole entire year. And you can see this goes for a couple pages. So, very in-depth plan. You have a chronicle, chronological order of the books of the Bible of the Old Testament. So, based on when they were written and their content. Here you have classification of Old Testament books according to uh, how they're listed in the Bible. Standard classification in English and then Hebrew classification. And then here you're going to have the books and orders of the Bible. <clears throat> Old and New Testaments. Uh, abbreviations for books of the Bible. Introduction to the Old Testament. Then you have the Old Testament annotated. And the reason why he titles that is because he has actually outlined every book in detail. And we'll kind of look at that as we go in. But you'll have an introduction to every book. You'll have title, authorship, contents. And then he gives you the outline of it at the beginning. So you can see how detailed this outline is. But then also this outline is actually in the biblical text and breaks down as you go along. So it's very easy to follow along with it. His uh, outlines are very detailed very easy to follow, and I find them very, very helpful. Then also, at the beginning of every book, you have a timeline of Genesis, or if you don't have a timeline of Genesis, you have a timeline of that book, and um, that will go through and kind of show you the historical events around it, and then also, kind of, what else is going on in the Bible at that time? Okay, so then you get right here into Genesis. You have a beautiful font here. So you can see the book of Genesis, references on the outer columns, beautiful text in the middle. This is, I think, they say it's a nine-point font. Let me double-check real quick. Uh, let's see, it doesn't say, doesn't say on here, the size of the font. But I'm going to say it's a nine and a half by looking at it. I would say it reads even more like a 10. It is a very readable font. Beautiful. The pages are white. This font is very dark. Pops off the page. It's very easy on the eyes. But you can kind of see how the notes are at the bottom. He takes very conservative views. Young Earth Creation <laughs> does a great job of explaining um, here why there is not a gap theory according to how the structure of the passage is set up. Um, he's got charts and maps through here, but they're always relegated to underneath this line. So you always have the text up here, notes at the bottom. So I love how that's done. You have wide margins. Actually, I took notes in this. So I'll show you how the notes, how much notes you can write in this. But the wide margins are very useful. You can see for a glued binding, we're already in Genesis 1. It's laying completely flat. And again, I think that has a lot to do with this genuine leather cover. Uh, it's just very supple. But I'll just flip through this to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like on any given page. So you can see it's a four column layout on every page, which gives you eight columns total. Tons of room to take notes, though. So that was also a purpose. Um, Ryrie wanted this to be a wide margin Bible for people to take their own study notes. Um, but you can see here, uh, 
the breakdown of the outlines, right? So you can see at the beginning, outline, outline, and not every chapter has it sometimes, like here, chapter 11, because you're still in the same theme. So I love how he outlines every book of the Bible. This is going to just be very, very helpful for Bible study. If you're trying to preach how to break down maybe a whole book and how to what passages to preach on any given Sunday, you can see there there were some maps and charts. Uh, it does come with one ribbon. The ribbon's very thin. Um, not really anything to write home about there. Um, I wish there was two for a study Bible, but uh, nonetheless, you do get one. So I'll show you where I took notes here in Ecclesiastes. Our church on Wednesday nights is going through the book of Ecclesiastes together. And uh, I took quite a bit of notes this week in the margin. So you can kind of see that. So you can see there's actually tons, I mean, that's, I'm writing full sentences in this margin. Now, I am writing smaller, but for me, that's still very uh, legible when I have it, like, in a pulpit or on a table. But I'll show you the backside there. There's the ghosting on it. So, it did not bleed through. I used the 01 Pigma Micron, so a little bit bigger nib than the 005. Um, and I think it worked out pretty good there. I'll probably use an 005. From now on but the 01 like I can use 01 and it's not I'm not too worried about it um, the notes at the bottom are very good they're not um, theoretical they're not um, skeptical he's not bringing doubt into the text he really just explains it a lot of these notes are just really they're historical archaeological theological um, or he's help explaining phrases um, like in Ecclesiastes here Actually, it really helped uh, me understand what the passage was saying. There's some hard phrases in here that the King James translators left uh, ambiguous on purpose. They weren't trying to influence the translation. And so it was a little difficult to like, well, what's what's going on? And his notes really helped explain what the King James translators were going for and what they were saying. And so I found that very, very helpful. This is a red letter edition. Oh, and then here you have <clears throat> Harmony of the Gospels. This is in between the Testaments, Maccabean Revolt. So you have tons of stuff here in between the Testaments. Then you have the New Testament annotated. Again, here's the outline of the book of Matthew. Just a very deep outline. And then a timeline. So you can see there the outlines. And all these dark uh, headers are the outline in the book. So you can see that red letter. This red letter is very deep. It is a very deep red. Beautiful red. Very easy on the eye. Um, this is honestly one of my favorite. I think one of my favorite red letters. So this is my first Ryrie that I've owned. I've seen Ryrie's before. Uh, but I finally jumped on this one. Just love the layout. The look of it. I love that the notes are. He doesn't say anything controversial just to be controversial. But he's not um, afraid to take a stand on certain things either. So... Uh, he stands up for the truth of the gospel, the truth of God's word, um, the premillennial faith, but uh, he does so without being, you know, controversial or really um, over the top in his notes. So um, it's nice in that regard. And I find this actually better laid out in a better system than the Schofield. And I love the Schofield. But I, I think I like this, prefer this slightly better. So you can see it still lays flat. We'll go through here to the back. Oh, and I was going to show you, just to show you how readable this font is. Here's a Bearing Precious Seed uh, hand size Bible. This is a 10 point font. Okay. I'll put these side by side. And when you look at that, I mean, I'm telling you, I'll try to maybe fold the page over here so we can get a better comparison. I mean, it does almost look like a 10-point font. It reads that easy. 
and the spade, the line spacing is done really well. Now it's not line matched, but uh, the font is dark enough, the paper is wide enough to where there's not horrible amounts of ghosting. So you can see it on there, but it's not it's not bad by any means. Not distracting at all, and the font is just so beautiful and well laid out. I mean, really, this is one of my I just love the layout. It's just clean. It almost reminds me of the Westminster with uh, notes. <laughs> So it's a very nice, clean layout, and I think something you'll enjoy studying with, especially when we get to the back here, there's just tons of helps. Um. <clears throat> okay, so end of Revelation. Then you have index to principal subjects in the notes, so he actually breaks down his notes according to subjects. So that way you can come back here and look up a subject and find the notes on that subject. So you have like Aaron, Moses, uh, you have things about people, places, things. So this is helpful for study, especially if you're, you know, you're dealing with a topic maybe. Maybe you are studying the life of Moses. You can come back here, look up all the notes on Moses, see how those help you. Here is a synopsis of Bible doctrine by Charles Ryrie. So this goes through... <laughs> Um, just like solid biblical uh, doctrine. So he has here like uh, terminology. So terminology that's used in it. Uh, definition of biblical doctrine. Theories of inspiration. Formation of the, of the canon. Uh, biblical covenants. Principles of interpretation. Uh, here he goes over the doctrine of God. You have the doctrine of Christ. So you have like a systematic theology here in the back. Doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then here it looks like um, going back to a doctrine of Christ. Talking about the virgin birth. Doctrine of angels. Doctrine of Satan. Doctrine of demons. Doctrine of man. So this follows a very systematic uh, layout. Doctrine of sin. Doctrine of salvation. Doctrine of Future Things, Doctrine of the Church. I mean, this thing is just packed full of awesome stuff. Here's an article on the inspiration of the Bible, also written by Charles Ryrie. Um, he takes something very close to the Chicago Statement. I would go a little bit further than what he says on inspiration. Well, uh, maybe not on inspiration, but um, maybe on preservation. Um but he, he does believe the Bible was preserved as well. But I think I would go a little bit further than what he says. But nonetheless, it's still a good article. Yeah, if you're understanding the Bible, um, illumination, interpretation, how we got our Bible. So he goes through a brief history of that. The meaning and blessings of salvation. And that's a really good one. He just goes through, like, um, let's see here. We'll go through this. Uh, substitution for sin. It provided redemption for sin. Um, effected uh, reconciliation. Provided propitiation. Judged the sin nature. Brought the end of the law. It is the ground of the believer's cleansing from sin. Uh, some benefits of Christ's death. Justification. Adoption. Sanctification. We have archaeology in the Bible. So some helpful notes here. A brief survey of church history. I actually read through this whole thing. It was really good. If you don't have a knowledge of early church history or church history in general, this gives you a very cursory, very basic view of that. Um, but it's still very well written. I found it very, very engaging and uh, very helpful. There were some things that I saw that were kind of outdated, or um, at least I think some scholars would say some different things today. But for the most part, I would say this is very, very well written. This gets you your feet wet into church history, and it's very good. And it's more um, applicable. He writes this very warm-heartedly. Um, then you have topic, uh, topical index of Scripture. So here's more just topics in general. So you have black, uh, like backsliding, blessing, blessings, children, uh, Christian living. He says, see sanctification, conscience, contentment. So this goes through alphabetically, but you can find tons of things like doubt, forgiveness, fellowship, uh, God's sovereignty, kindness of God, hope, honesty, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the law. I mean, you can just see. And these are all verses. Okay, These are verses that are printed under these under these um, topics. I mean, this thing is just so in-depth on what you can study. And then at the back here, you get a very 
good concordance. Three columns, and this goes for quite a few pages. So it starts there on 2059, and at the back there you get a chronology of the world. Um, and this goes to 2168. So you have over a hundred page concordance here, about a hundred and nine page concordance. That's three columns. So a lot of entries here could help with some Bible study as well. Then you have a, like I said, an eight page um, timeline here of the history of the world through the, through the biblical timeline, I should say all the way up to the life of Jesus. And you have a map index, and this is going to look familiar, like your local church and church Bible publish, church Bible publisher maps, um, because this is the Moody maps. So you can see, it's actually interesting to see the Moody maps done by Moody. The, the colors and everything are fantastic. So uh, give you a look at this, though. So these maps probably all look familiar to us. Cambridge used these for a while um, before they got their own maps. And then Church Bible Publishers still uses this set of maps. Beautiful coloring. Everything is laid out very well. And actually, it's cool seeing it with their actual plates and everything. It's very, very well done. You see, then there's quite a few maps here, too, for Bible study. Again, I'll try to... I know this video is going long, so... Uh, my more in-depth review will probably be even longer, but then you have reinforced pages here in the back as well to help with that. And then you do have a nice final paste-off liner. This is very well done. Um, yeah, the binding done in Italy is just fantastic. This is just a beautiful, look how supple this is. I mean, that thing just folds over the hand, uh, but it's still rugged. Like, you can kind of scratch it up a little bit, um, yet yeah, it's still soft, soft and tactile. So, I mean, this thing's awesome. <clears throat> I use that Bible study. Pretty easy to carry. It's a, I mean, it's a study Bible size. It's about 10 by 7, 7 and a half, um, about an inch and probably three quarter thick. So it's a thick Bible. Here's that Bearing Precious Seed hand size Bible, just to give you a comparison. It's an 8 by 5. Okay, so yeah, you can definitely see this is about 10 by, 10 by 7. So. And it's definitely a little bit thicker than the BB, uh, BPS hand size Bible. So guys, this has been the general kind of flyover, real quick overview of this Bible. We'll go more in depth into those articles, charts, uh, things in the beginning as well. How to study the Bible, kind of his heart behind the Ryrie. And then also we'll go over the things in the back as well and show you how to use it. Show you how to use the cross references and the study notes um, as well. So I'll try to get that done sometime next week. But this is the Ryrie King James Study Bible in genuine leather. And uh, I'll give you here the ISBN if you're interested. Again, you can find this on Moody Bible Pu or Moody Publishers website for $64.99. You can find this on Christian Book for about the same price. Uh, they also have a thumb indexed edition. And then, uh, or if you go to Mardell, you could go to Mardell and uh, look up coupons for Mardell. They always have a 30% off one new item coupon on their store. You just click it, open it, uh, go to press print. It pulls up a scanned barcode and then the cashier can kind of scan it up front as you're checking out. But I got this for like 63 bucks. So it was absolute uh, deal, I think, because I love it. I love the layout. I love the feel of it. And after seeing, like I had concerns with the glued binding, but after seeing people have used this and abused it for for 15 years, I said, Psh, if I get 10 years out of it, I mean, that's sometimes as long as stitched bindings will last. So I figured, hey, it'll be worth it to check it out. So I'll be using this thing quite a bit. But I hope this review has been helpful to you. We'll go over again some more of the notes, the theology of the notes. But again, he's not controversial by any means. Um, it's very straightforward, very helpful, and done in a very scholarly yet very applicable and pastoral way as well. And if you have any questions, though, or something that you do want to see me go over in the fuller review, please let me know. Take care and God bless.